Hello and welcome back to Patriot Contraptions. I am so happy to see all of you out there. Actually, I can't see any of you right now. I'm talking to a microphone in my studio. Anyway, today's topic is pretty much outside of the realm of our normal channel topics where I'm building cool stuff because it is how I paid off my house in three years. Now, very specifically in advance, I'm going to say I am not a financial advisor and this is not a how-to video. This probably won't be possible for some of you out there because you're in a completely different boat than I was when I did this. So that being said, um, all those disclaimers out of the way, let's get into it. I'm going to have five different things that I'm going to cover in today's video. The first one is savings. The second one is debt. The third one is planning. The fourth is implementation. And the fifth is working hard. Let's get going. When it comes to savings, I talk about this a lot on this channel. Saving money on projects, um, not going over your budget on the channel, um, just in general, not spending too much money when you're building something. And this has been a factor through my entire life is saving money because at a young age, I earned, learned that if instead of spending a $2 a day on a candy bar and I saved that up for 100 days, I would have $200 and I could buy a kayak and go out on the river and have a lot more fun than eating a candy bar every day. So that being said, I started saving as a kid and I started saving a lot over my entire life. The entire way through high school, I pretty much saved every dollar from every job I had. So I was able to then use that later on for a down payment. Important part of the story that I wanted to say in advance is saving. Buying a house is not just about what you do when you buy the house. It's about what you've done the 10, 15, 20 years before you buy the house. There's a lot more to buying a house than actually just buying a house. Everything else is pre-planning and comes into effect to that decision. The next topic I want to cover is debt. And debt is a big topic because um, a lot of people go into debt and I did not want to do that growing up. I definitely stayed well and clear of my limits on my credit cards. I paid them off every single month and I made sure that they were decent and that I had a good credit score and that I was keeping up with those when I worked and I bought things. And the main reason I even had a credit card was simply to get the cash back because I figured, well, if you're getting like 2% cash back on something, that's basically free two cents. So who wouldn't want free two cents as long as you're paying off the card every month? Um, worked out for me. Uh, but anyway, that's what I decided to do. So I kept everything paid off. The other thing I did was I got a job right off the bat. Like as soon as I could get a job, I think I actually got the job with, before I was actually old enough to work it by like, um, I got the approval like the day I turned old enough to actually work and I got my driver's license and I was actually able to drive to the job. Then I was able to actually start working there, but I'd already done the interview stuff so that when I turned old enough to work, I was ready to go. I got my first job and I worked the entire way through high school. Um, saved up money, saved, 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 didn't have debt. The other thing I did was coming out of high school, I decided very quickly that I didn't want to go into college, um, like a four-year university necessarily. I didn't want to go to a four-year university. And the reason for this is kind of funny, but I had this counselor come in one time and talk to us when I was very young about college. And I, I just kind of asked her, like, what's it cost per year? And she was like, oh, it's like $15,000 a year in tuition and don't really worry about it. And I think she said some other stuff about funds and stuff after that, but I just heard $15,000 and me as a little kid goes adding that up in my head. I'm like, that's $60,000 over four years. That's a lot of money and I'm not going to pay that off ever in my little kid life. And I'm like, holy cow, I don't want to do that. So for some reason that stuck with me over the next five, 10 years as I went through my high school years. And by the time it got the time to go to college, I definitely was like not going to a university in my head. And so I looked for alternatives and I came up with what's known as trade schools or um, community colleges. Community colleges have a lot of perks. Number one, if you look at the degrees in them, you can make a lot of money coming out of a community college. You can make like 50, 60, 70 grand if you look into the tech sectors, the manufacturing sectors, um, the programming sectors. That's a lot of money for not only having like a two year degree. So that's the way I decided to go. And I picked a degree that would make me like $50,000 coming out of school. I thought that would be a decent amount. Now. I've learned a lot since then about how much life actually costs, but that's a topic for another day. So I know how much I'm going to make coming out of school and I didn't have any debt going through school because I worked my entire way through it and I was able to pay cash because it cost like a quarter of the amount that a university would cost. So next up in my story, I decided that I had to make a plan. I hadn't really had a plan going forward. I just knew that I wanted to make $50,000 and I didn't want to go to a university and I'd been saving this entire time. So I decided it's about time I made a plan. So I looked around and I looked at where I wanted to work and I applied for some places and I got some offers back and I was like, okay, now I need to figure out how I'm going to live there. What is it going to cost? 
cost me to live there? What are all the expenses that come in this project of buying a house? So I looked at food expenses. How much is it going to cost me to eat a month? How much is it going to cost me in utilities, electric, sewer, water, gas, etc.? Added all that up and I came up with a figure of about $15,000 that it was going to cost me. So basically, I had a salary of $50,000. I had $15,000 in expenses. I subtract that from the $50,000. I get $35,000 that I can spend on a mortgage. Um, the next decision I decided to make was how soon do I want to um, pay this mortgage off? Because to me, money was the primary factor. I do not like that. I am a religious man, and I believe that part of my faith is not being beholden to anyone through the form of debt, let alone the fact that I've been doing budget projects my entire life, and the fact that somebody else is going to own part of a project that I have just doesn't sit well with me as an inventor and a person that likes to be creative. So I decided, you know what, I want to get rid of this as soon as possible, and to me, as soon as possible meant three years. So I'm like, I want to buy a house, and I want to pay this house off in three years, because by gum by golly, I'm not going to be in debt. So that's what I decided to do. And that really limited how many houses I could look at because I had to go through something called um, figuring out a mortgage. And so the way a mortgage works is a mortgage is basically like a loan. Um, say you take out a mortgage of $100,000 at a 10% interest um, yearly. So that's going to be a $100,000 loan and you're going to have to pay $10,000 in interest because 10% of that loan is $10,000. Now that's going to be broken up into something called your mortgage payments. Your monthly payments depending on how long the loan is if it's a 30 year it's a 15 year if it's like a five year loan whatever that you decide to choose um for me i decided to go with a 15 year for no particular reason other than that's what everybody online seemed to recommend was a 15 year loan i don't know why they recommend that i didn't really look into that part i decided okay everybody recommends a 15 year i'm gonna go with 15 years so whatever anyway that's what i decided to use so those are what my calculations are based on for the purpose of this video anyway that being said I knew that I had to take out a loan. So for our example, we were talking about a $100,000 loan and paying a 10% interest just for the sake of this example. And let's say, for example, that you're paying uh, $2,000 a month in payments, which means that you're going to pay, say, $24,000 a year in payments your first year towards this mortgage. So of that mortgage, because you're paying 10% interest, that first year's payment towards the interest alone is going to take $10,000 away from that 24,000, meaning that you're actually paying only $14,000 towards the principal, which is the total amount you owe that $100,000, which means that the next year you're going to have $86,000 left that you're going to have to pay a 10% interest rate or $8,600 in interest on that year, so on and so forth. That's the way um, a mortgage works in a nutshell. Um, oversimplified probably is how that's explained right there, but that's what I figured out. Um, obviously, I decided that I wanted to pay this house off in three years, so I had to take that into account. And the first part in taking that into account is how much of a loan can I take out? So I looked at the different um, mortgages available to me and I looked at how much I was making and I decided that I could take out a loan between $60,000 and $80,000. And the reason for that is because I could make the monthly payments and then I could also use the money left over from having paid on those monthly payments that whatever happens to be left, say I take out a loan that's $70,000 a year and I'm paying a monthly payment of $600, which means that I've got $7,200 a year that I've paid towards that mortgage. And then on top of that, that leaves me with $27,800 left that I can put towards the principal. Now, if you add $20,800 up over the term of three years, that equals $83,400, which meant that I could probably take out a loan of about $80,000 and be able to pay it off in three years. Only two more steps to go. So the next step is obviously implementation. I stuck to my plan. I implemented it as written. I got my job. It paid me like $50,000 a year. And then I got my mortgage, which actually ended up paying me being exactly what I said, $70,000. So that was fantastic. Um, I chose those ho a house specifically based on those principles. I was lucky enough in my era that real estate at the time was lower than it is today. And I was able to find a house that cheap. Um, next up, I was able to work really hard. And that's the final step, work hard, don't give up on your plan, keep going. Um, being in manufacturing, I was able to put in a ton of overtime. Um, my boss gave me lots of opportunities and I took every single one of them to put in overtime and put as much money as possible towards paying off this debt. And in the end, I actually not only paid off the house in three years, I paid it off in two years because of all that overtime. So there you have it. Um, that's how I paid off my house 
in three years and actually was two years, but to stick to my plan, I'm calling it how I paid off my house in three years, simply through the process of saving, having no debt, having a plan ahead of time, um, implementing that plan and working very hard. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Patreon Contraption signing out and hoping you have a fantastic day.